Hello, Digital Arts 2. We're looking at Section 7, where we're talking about balance. And for this particular assignment, uh, Assignment 7A, we're going to make some concentric circles. So they have some shortcuts that we're going to use in order to make sure our um, circles are perfectly balanced and not as much work as you would think. So I have my new Inkscape document open and viewed um, zoomed on page, so I'm all set up and ready to go. And the first thing we're going to do is grab our ellipse tool and by when holding down control, I'm going to click and drag. You want this to be pretty good size. You want to fill up at least half the, um, half the width of the page as you draw your circle. Next, we're going to go up to our and open our fill and stroke panel here. And we're going to make sure our blur is set to zero and our opacity slider is all the way over to the right at 100. Then we want to make sure our fill color is solid fill and we're going to make it completely black to start out with. So adjust your slider so we have a completely black filled circle. And then under stroke style, we're going to set the width field to 60 pixels. We have a nice thick stroke on our circle here. And actually, we're, we're going to have our fill be no fill, and then the stroke color is what's going to be completely black. So adjust your settings so that there's no fill inside the circle, but the stroke of the circle is completely black. All right, next with our circle selected, we're going to go up to the object, actually path, object to path for our circle, and then go and select your nodes tool. Then click and drag over your entire circle to select all of your nodes. Then with all of your nodes selected, we're going to do this option here, break path at selected nodes. So that way it kind of breaks the path in between each of our nodes. Then I'm going to click off to the side here so that it unselects everything. And while holding down shift, I'm going to click on our top right segment, our bottom right segment, and our bottom left segment here and hit delete to delete those pieces of my circle. So then only the top left segment of my circle remains. So with this segment selected, we're going to go over to our stroke panel here and double check a few things. Make sure again that our width is set to 60. And then we also want to make sure that we have a butt cap on our line segment here. So make sure this first option um, for the cap option is selected. Next, with our line segment still selected, we're going to go up to the path menu and go down to stroke to path. And you'll notice just a little adjustment there when it moves the selection box around tighter to our line segment. And then we can also see when we click on our nodes tool that these node options become available on our line segment as well. And before we move on, we're going to go ahead and save this project. So go up to file, save as, and should be in a section seven folder and we're going to name this project Balance. So go ahead and type Balance in your file name and hit Save. Next, with our selection tool selected and make sure this line segment is selected, we're going to hit Control-C to copy this segment and then move your mouse over a little bit to the right and Control-V and it'll paste an identical copy of that line segment where your mouse was. So what our ultimate goal is going to be, um, we're making some concentric circles, but we're also going to add some pattern to them and design. So we're going to create some patterns on these line segments and then clone them to create the concentric circles. Okay, so let's make sure we have our um, line segments set up and ready. So go ahead and select one of your arcs and over in the fill and stroke tab, go to the stroke style and now we're going to set width at zero and that should set up your line segment to be ready to create our design and to create our design we're going to be using our calligraphy tool and make sure that you have a black fill color selected when you go to use your calligraphy tool and draw some lines off to the side just to um, see if you like the design what it looks like uh, make if you want a different um, shape or width. You want to make sure it's smaller than your line segment because we're going to actually be drawing on the line segment. So something like this would probably be too big. 
Um, so kind of mess with these different uh, calligraphy tool options to find a pen stroke that you like. I think I'm going to stick with dip pen. No, that's too wide. Actually, if I move this down. So find and adjust your markers to until you get the size and stroke that you like. Okay, I got mine picked out now, so I'm going to go ahead and select and delete all of these. So once you have a stroke style and size picked out with your calligraphy pen, um, go and pick a different color and preferably one that will stand out well against black um, other, and something other than white. So choose a bright color that will stand out against the black line segment that we're going to design on and something other than white. So now we're going to select our original line segment, then go up to view, zoom, and zoom in on our selection. So we're going to be using our calligraphy tool and the color that we chose to create a design on this line segment. So you can use the calligraphy tool, you can use um, the shapes, tools, um, whatever you want to use, and you're just going to create a fun design on your line segment. So once you have your design created, we're now we're going to kind of cut out the design pattern from our line segment. So with your selection tool, go and select your line segment, and then press and hold the shift key while you click one of the designs on the line segment. You can go up to path and dim difference and you'll see that that kind of cuts out then that shape from our line segment. So you're going to continue to do this until you get all of your shapes cut out from your line segment. So make sure you're pressing shift every time before you go in and use the difference option. So once you're finished with creating the difference between the shapes that you made on your line segment, you might have a pattern that looks something like this. Hopefully it's a little more creative. You guys are a lot more creative than I am, so it probably looks a lot better than this one. So once you have that done, you're going to select your line segment. Then we're going to go up to Edit, Clone, and Create Tiled Clones. Then in our Settings, we want to make sure our Symmetry tab is selected. And we want to, on the drop-down menu, go and select the CMM Reflection plus Reflection plus 180 degree rotation. So make sure that option is selected under your Symmetry tab. On Rows and Columns, we're going to set both Rows and Columns to 2. If it's not already. So Rows and Columns to 2. And then hit Create. And you can see in the background it already creates those additional line segments. So go ahead and close that dialog box then and you can zoom out to see that it created clones of our line segment and arranged it in a perfect circle. And to make sure we keep these in a perfect circle and don't accidentally click on something and drag it out of the way, we're going to click and drag to select all of those line segments, go up to Object and Group, and now they're all grouped together as one image. So now that we've reached this point, let's go ahead and go up to File, Save, just to save how far we've done. Again, this should be saved as balance. Next, we're going to use this other arc segment to create an additional design. Only this time we're going to use some shapes tools. And when you're drawing your shapes, you want to make sure that they are at least touching the line segment a little bit. So make sure you draw some shapes and then arrange them along this line segment so that they are at least touching the line segment like so. Once you've got some shapes drawn, you're going to click and drag to select all of those pieces. Go up to Path, and we're going to select Union. And you can see that it then joins those all those objects together. And now we're going to do the same kind of thing we did with our first line segment. Go down to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. Make sure you're the same symmetry CMMs option selected. Two rows, two columns. Click Create. And you'll notice, you'll notice that my line segments don't quite match up just because that one star is hanging over the edge a little bit. So I'm going to actually going to go back and make some of those adjustments and reclone it so that it closes as a complete circle. So I just went back in and made those adjustments. So now when I cloned it, it makes a perfect circle. So that works out a little better.
Now I'm going to click and drag to select all of those op objects, make sure I got them all, and go up to Object Group to make that one big image. Now I'm going to resize this circle to make it fit inside my other circle. So holding down Control, I'm going to size that down a little bit. And I just want it, I want it to be just inside this a larger circle. So I want it to fill it up pretty good, about like that. So once you have it a good size inside, go ahead and select both of your circles. Go up to Object and Align and Distribute. And we're going to select the center objects horizontally and on the horizontal axis as well. So that perfectly aligns our circles inside each other. And still with those both circles selected, we're going to go up to Object and Group. And now that gives me one large object. And next, I'm just going to, with that object selected, Control C, Control V to make a copy of that image. Holding Control, I'm going to size that image down. And I actually want to put this inside then of my other circles. Size that down a little more, get it to fit right in there, and then select all those circles to align them horizontally and vertically within each other. So at this point your circles should look a little like this. Next we're going to add some background colors to this image. So go ahead and grab your ellipse tool, holding down control, click and drag to make a circle. And this circle is going to go behind our original, our smaller circles. So with your smaller circles selected, hit control C to copy. And then with your colored circle selected, go up to edit and select paste size and that will paste the exact size to this circle right here. So we're going to then move that over and send it to the back by this lower selection to the bottom command. So then, that, so that then lowers that background color to the back, kind of like a layer. So it makes it the back layer. So now, so now we're going to draw another background color by holding down, click and draw an ellipse and choose a different color now. And we're going to make it the size of this second circle in here. So you might have to click around. We just want to select this this circle inside and go ahead and hit copy, control C, and then select this circle and go to the paste size option. So that then paste the size to our circle here. We can drag that over and then lower that to the bottom as well and you'll see that color shows up in the background. And now you're going to repeat those same steps for the largest circle. All right, next we're going to set up some guidelines on our page to make sure our um, image is balanced. We're going to add some more images and make them all balanced. So click on your ruler and drag out to add some vertical guidelines. And we also want to click on our top ruler and drag down to add some horizontal guidelines. Now we're going to set these in specific locations. So double click on one of your vertical guidelines and we're going to set the X field to 500. And OK, and double click on your other horizontal or vertical guideline. We're going to type in 250. And now click on a horizontal guideline. Double click if you can get right on it. There we go. And we're going to set our Y field to 700. OK, then click on our last guideline. And we're setting this one to 350. And OK. Next, we're going to actually group, make sure all of our circles are grouped together by selecting them all, going to Object Group, then hit Control c to copy, and paste two different copies of these circles. And then holding down Control, you're going to resize these copies. And using what you know about the rule of thirds that we read about in this section, you're going to apply and arrange these circles on your page or on your page document to keep the artwork balanced. So when you're done, you should have something that looks similar to this. You can hide your guides by going up to View Guides. Um, we we'll, can either show them or hide them. You want to make sure your circles are arranged correctly so that your image is balanced. Make sure you go in and add a background layer and do some, some type of gradient or color fill adjustment to that. And when you're done, this is your assignment 7A. Oh, and don't forget to export an image of everything.